What is going on, all of you growers and smokers out there? Easy Breezy here, come back for another mushroom substrate tutorial video. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be checking out the classic BRF tech or the brown rice flour technique. But before we get into that video, ladies and gentlemen, a couple things you guys got to do. Be sure to follow me on all of my social media. Everything's down in the description. I'm trying my very best to be as active as I can on all of that. So it really helps me if you guys go and follow all of that so you guys can get in on the action. Because uh, I post mostly daily on everything. Uh, also, you guys want to go ahead and email me. Uh, of course, you can uh, always hit that up. That ain't no big deal. And uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's begin. Alright, so step one, ladies and gentlemen, we need to get all of our supplies ready. So here we have everything that we're going to need for this. We have a big bag of vermiculite. And this here you could buy at Lowe's or Home Depot or anywhere really that you can, um, that they sell farming uh, supplies and stuff like that. Uh, farming garden supplies, stuff like that. Uh, down here, and, and sorry about all of this mess over here. Excuse my PS1s and everything like that. That's, a, that's another project. That's maybe a Patreon membership thing if you guys are into that. Um, anyways, we got our six uh, pint sized jars here. We got our wide mouths because we know we need that wide mouth. Uh, if you get anything other than the wide mouths, you're gonna have a bad time uh, when, you're, when you're taking out your cakes at the end of all this. So make sure you really get the wide mouth jars. And uh, this one's being reused for, for reasons. Anyways, we're gonna need our brown rice. Now this is kind of hard to find, but if you have any organic place nearby, uh, you can go ahead and probably find some brown rice flour there uh, Or uh, you can always just get some brown rice and grind it up into flour by using a coffee grinder So those options are open make sure you have some brown rice flour uh, Now people ask me all the time Can you use alternatives and there are alternatives that you can use and we will go into more of that in other videos Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna need some heavy-duty uh Aluminum foil here. I always get the heavy duty because anytime you're throwing stuff in high heat You always want to get the good stuff. Anyways, it costs a dollar extra or whatever Just make sure you get some good stuff. You don't want any anything that's gonna break apart easy. Not no no dollar store stuff um, Gonna need some gloves of course you don't well you don't need gloves, but they help they help keep everything sterile and sanitized of course we have our 70% isopropyl alcohol our liquid measuring cup here. This is the only one that I could afford because um, they're all expensive and uh, it's only a cup and a half one so it's just a tiny one so you know it is what it is. We're gonna need a set of dry measuring cups. This is where all my money went right there. A mixing bowl and of course a way to sterilize everything. We got ourselves our crock pot here. You can use a pressure cooker. In this scenario though I'm gonna be using a uh, pressure or uh, uh, Instapot, I mean not crockpot, Instapot, uh, because a lot of people ask me if you can uh, sterilize with that and everything. So we're going to be using that in this tutorial. If you want a tutorial on how to use a uh, pressure cooker, let me know and I will make that. And of course we got to have our energy drinks because we need to refuel and we have our uh, joint down here too in case we get too stressed out in the process. Here we are ladies and gentlemen, step number two. So, first off, we got to get our mixing bowl out in front of us. And our recipe calls that we're going to use is a 2 to 1 ratio. So, 2 parts vermiculite, 1 part brown rice flour to 1 part water, a uh, 2 1 1 ratio. So, we have our vermiculite here just chilling. We'll go ahead and we'll dump that bad boy in first. Looking good. Now, this is a kind of a finer grain. And usually, I like to use a medium uh, vermiculite, but this will be good enough for us. Next, we'll go ahead and we'll put our brown rice flour in if I don't destroy half of my kitchen. And this is just a half cup of that. And after I put those two in, and I've already sterilized my hands with the isopropyl alcohol here, the 70%, and I let it set in and dry for about 30, 40 seconds till it was completely dry uh, before starting any of this. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and mix this all by hand, just get a nice hand mix in. That way, all the brown rice flour and vermiculite are all mixed up evenly and you don't get clumps of uh, brown rice flour when you add in your water. So I like to go ahead and give it a nice little hand mix here. Until it all looks pretty evenly mixed up, at least as good as we can get it. Then we'll grab our uh, half cup of water here. Right? Yeah, half cup of water here. We'll pour it in and then we'll go ahead and 
mix it all together again by hand. That's why I like using the gloves. It's a quicker cleanup after everything's all said and done. Pay attention to try to get the sides of the bowl too, as you can. Try to scrape it all up so we can get no dry spots. Everything's mixed evenly and thoroughly. And it's almost like a sand consistency. It almost feels like a wet sand. And that's what you want. You want everything nice and broke up. Step number three, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead and grab your aluminum foil and cover up the BRF that we just made and go ahead and push it off to the side. Next, what we have to do is prepare our jars for this. So we're going to need a nail and a hammer here. And believe it or not, I did wash this hammer uh, in my kitchen here. So it is clean, even though it looks dirty, but you know, it is what it is. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab our nail here and we're going to put uh, holes like a box in each one of these lids. Once you got that all done, now we can go ahead and remove the lids of these jars. After we get all of these lids off here, we can go ahead and bring our BRF over here. Pop open our aluminum foil. We can get rid of this now. We don't need that anymore. Throw on a fresh pair, a fresh pair of gloves and go ahead and make sure you got your 70% isopropyl alcohol, which I got right over here. Make sure you have that in and rub it in until it's completely dry, which I have been doing this entire time. It's gonna take a little time for it to dry, but just be patient until it is all dry until so you can see no more sheen on it. You see, I still got a little bit right there. So you can see no more sheen on the gloves. Anyways, so what we're gonna do now is fill all of these jars up with our brown rice flour up until this little lip right here. This little notch right here, we're gonna fill until that point right there. I just wanted to stop the time lapse here real quick just to show you what happens when you don't uh, when you mix in the water with the brown rice flour and the vermiculite at the same time you can see all of these chunks right here that are forming of just pure brown rice flour and I'm trying to get you the best shot of this as I can but it's just really clumpy with brown rice flour all over it and it's just a really bad time to mix through it all that's why it's always important to mix your dry ingredients before your wet ingredients all right sorry about that guys back to the time lapse sorry to stop the time lapse again but I just wanted to show you also a really important detail when you're placing when you're putting your uh, BRF into your jars it's really important not to pack anything down make it fall in there very loosely loosely shake it into place don't try to pack it into place you want to really uh, make everything uh, uh, more easy for the mycelium to burrow through and go through as it travels and if it's really packed down and hard it's gonna have a really hard time spreading through your whole uh, through your whole jar so just something to keep in mind also after I fill up every jar I put the lid on them upside down like that just in case anything tries to get in there you know uh, any type of hair or anything like that. I'm wearing a hat right now, so hopefully that's not an issue. But just to be on the safe side, I try to put these uh, lids on upside down like that. Just something to keep in mind. Back to the hyperlapse. Step number four, ladies and gentlemen. After we got all of our jars filled up here to the top, and go ahead and remove our lids from the top here because now we're going to add a air barrier on top without the rest of our vermiculite so go ahead and grab some more vermiculite here i got my little cup here and you just want to fill it up and make a huge mess all over that's really what you want to do is just try to make the biggest mess that you can and i like to try to leave at least an eighth of an inch on top that way it's not completely full all the way to the top. So I leave about an eighth of an inch open on top. And I know I repeated it, but you know, you know how it is. So let's go ahead and fill up the rest of these. And this, uh, this substrate is good for all uh, mushroom types. You can grow anything with this. It'll work pretty decently. At least it'll get you started. Until you find out what you want to grow with. Whether that's grain or 
uh, a log you know you can even might be a little too much in this jar here that'll be okay do as i say not what i do as i pack it down and i like to wipe away these lips too here because that will uh that'll mess up your seal big time when you're trying to pressure cook these so always wipe off your lip you don't want a dirty lip there we go looking nice everything's coming along great now hope you guys are excited to be growing some mushrooms because i am perfect these look great awesome after you get that all done simply just go ahead and throw our lip on top making sure they are at least one turnover hand tight if that makes any sense to you guys you know what i mean by that don't sit there and corkscrew it but you know make sure you, your cap is firmly on there and don't worry about the mess you'll clean it up in the future perfect now we got all that done our final step fifth and final step before we go ahead and throw her into the crock pot we gotta put aluminum foil over the tops of each one so we got our heavy aluminum foil and we just cover the tops like so and maybe i use too big of a piece on this one but i always like to go around the edge of the jar where you can see the bottom of the lip here with my thumb i like to go around the edge so you can get a really nice seal here and this will help keep out all excess water from getting in there because i see a lot of people have problems with getting too much water they have a watery substrate and that's because you probably didn't have your aluminum foil on as tight as you can and and uh water probably got in there so you can see how granular it looks in there that's what we like that's what we want to see so i'm going to go ahead and put aluminum foil on each one of these All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are at a home stretch here. This is step number six. And all that's left to do is go ahead and throw these jars into our Instapot here. So you can see here, our Instapot is about a quarter full, or yeah, about a quarter full or so of water here. And you don't want to run it any lower than that. Otherwise, all that water in there is going to evaporate and you're not going to properly sterilize these jars. So go ahead and we'll load up all of our jars in here. And don't worry, I know it sounds pretty bad the water levels rising pretty high here you think it breezy we're gonna get some bad things going on in there don't worry don't worry have patience don't worry everything's gonna work out just fine just just don't worry about it okay ladies and gentlemen perfect now that we got all that on we can go ahead and put our cap on now there's an arrow that shows us which is right there that shows us the direction to lock this in place make sure that you have it into the lock position and make sure that your steam valve here is in the off position that means off that means on make sure it's off next what we're going to want to do is go ahead and uh, hit our meat and stew button here it'll come up a time here we'll go ahead and move this to 90 90 minutes we're going to set this for or a minute 20 or an hour 20 hour and 20 minutes our pressure is on high and we can go ahead and hit start and that's going to preheat and then once it heats the timer is going to start and we will see it starting to tick down so let's go ahead and cut to another hyper relapse of that all right ladies and gentlemen now that that is all done you're gonna have to wait for a little while i always once this finishes up i'll wait 10 20 minutes and then I'll open up the exhaust valve here and I'll let that cool down for about another 5-10 minutes. Crack the top open. Watch your face. A lot of hot steam. You can see all of that steam coming up through there right there. I'm going to let these sit in here probably for about 4-5 or five hours. I'll let them cool down in here. Then I'll take them out and I'll put them into this little box behind you. I'll keep them stored in there for 24 hours. And I'll see you guys then. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. 24 hours later, these jars are all completely cooled down. All that's left to do is grab your syringe, take off this aluminum foil on top, and plop them spores right in there. Pop them bad boys right in there. And it turned out fan 
fantastic. Of course, you can see we are not overhydrated. We are perfectly right on the money of what we want. So if you guys liked this video and you guys enjoyed it and learned something about this, go ahead and send me a like. That'd be that'd be pretty cool. And uh, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, keep on growing, keep on smoking, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. See you later.